This is a Halifax Regional Arts production. Halifax Regional Arts is the supplementary funded fine arts school that provides support and enhancement across the HRCE for music, dance, drama, and visual art. We graciously acknowledge the support of HRM taxpayers and Halifax City Council in providing the support that makes so many amazing arts experiences possible for our students. This production of Twelfth Night was originally envisioned as a live performance in the spring of 2020, featuring secondary students from across the Halifax Regional Centre for Education. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic forcing students to isolate at home, the student actors committed to finishing the project in an online format, rehearsing and recording the play in a series of virtual meets throughout the spring of 2020. This audio version of Twelfth Night is the end result of countless hours of volunteer time on the part of our students, under the guidance and direction of Shakespeare by the Seas, Drew Duris O'Hara. This is an abridged version of Twelfth Night, which has been edited for time. The adaptation was done by Drew Duris O'Hara in 2020. <laughs> Act 2, Scene 1, The Seacoast. Enter Antonio. And Sebastian. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me, therefore I crave of you your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determined voyage is mere extravagancy. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended. But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, my sister was drowned. Alas, the day. She bore a mind that envy but could not call fair. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good, Antonio. Forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. Desire it not. Fare ye well at once. I am bound to Count Orsino's court. Farewell. Exit Sebastian. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I've many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem a sport, and I will go. Exit Antonio. Act 2, Scene 2, A Street. Enter Viola. First maid. Second maid. And third maid. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, miss, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved us our pains to have it taken away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly <laughs> threw it to her, and her will is, it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it is, in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. Exit first maid. Second maid. And third maid. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed so much that sure me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in these churlish messengers. None of my lord's ring? Why, he sent her none. I am the man. If it be so as tis, poor lady, she would better love a dream. 
disguise, I see thou art a wickedness. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him as she mistaken seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must entangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Act two, scene three, Olivia's house. Enter Fabian. 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 Sir Toby Belch. And Sir Andrew Eggycheek. Come, Sir Toby. Senior Fabian, Senior Fabian, Senior Fabian, a health friends. They drink. And drink. And drink. And drink. Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes, and thou knowest. Nay, my troth, I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. <laughs> be up after midnight, and to go to bed then is early. Does not our life consist of the four elements? I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Oh, thou art a scholar! Let us therefore eat and drink! How? Oh. I say, a stoop of wine! Enter Feste. Here comes the fool of faith. How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass! There is sixpence for you. Let's have a song! Would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song. Oh, a love song. Aye, aye, I care not for good life. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting, journeys end in lovers' meeting, every wise man's son doth know. Excellent! Good of faith! Good, good! What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty, then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff will not endure. Ah, uh, mellifluous voice, as I am true knight. A, a contagious breath, a Very contagious sweet. breath, and contagious of faith. But shall we make the heavens dance indeed? Most certain. Let our catch be. Thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. Tis not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool, it begins. Hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> <laughs> Come, begin. Enter Mariah unseen. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Oh, hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I prithee hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thy knave, I there dwelt a man in Babylon, my lady, O oh lady. Beshrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. <clears throat> oh, and the twelfth well day of December. Jingle bells, jingle Enter Halvolio. My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? 
Can ye make an alehouse of my lady's house? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We didn't keep time, sir! In our catches! <laughs> <laughs> sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go? What, and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. Out of tune, sir, ye lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Mariah! Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Exit Malvolio. And feste unseen. Go oh, shake your ears, Mary. Sir, sometimes he is a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. Oh, the devil a Puritan that he is, so crammed as he thinks, with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I, I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love I can write very much like my lady your niece. Excellent! I smell a device. A device. I have it in my nose, too. He shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece, and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now would make him an ass. <laughs> ass, I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I will plant you two and let these join in, where he shall find the letter for this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Exit Mariah. Before me. She's a good wench. And one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, night. Exit Sir Toby Belch. Act 2, Scene 4. Duke Orsino's Palace. Enter Duke Orsino. Viola. And Curio. Give me some music. Good Cesario, that old and antique song we heard last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Feste, the jester, my lord, a fool that the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. Seek him out, and play a tune a while. Exit, Curio. Come hither, boy, if ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it remember me. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterfully. My life upon it, young though thou art, that I hast stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. <laughs> she is not worth thee, then. What years in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. I think it well, my lord. <laughs> then let thy love be younger than thyself. For women are as roses, who fair flower, being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas, they that are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Re-enter Curio. And best day. Our fellow come, the song we heard last night, mark it, Cesario, it is silly sooth, and dabbles with the innocence of love. Come away, come away, death, and in sad suppress let me be laid. 
Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair crew maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it, did share it. Not a flower, not a flower sweet. On my black coffin let there be strong. Not a friend, not a friend grief. My poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand thousand sighs to save. Lay me, oh where? Sad true lover never find my grave to weep there, to weep there. There's for thy pains. No pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Now the melancholy god protect thee. Farewell. Exit Feste. And Curio. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands, the part that fortune hath bestowed upon her. Tell her, I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle, and queen of gems, that nature pranks her in attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir... I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. What's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too. And yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Bid no denay. Act two, scene five, Olivia Garden. Enter Sir Toby Belch. Sir Andrew. Fabian. Fabian. And Fabian. Come thy ways, Fabian. 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 Nay, we'll come. If we lose a scruple of this sport, let us be boiled to death with melancholy. Enter Mariah. Here comes the little villain. Get ye all five over the box tree. Mavolio's coming down this walk. Mariah throws down a letter. Lie thou there, for here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Exit Mariah. Enter Malvolio. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near, that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overwhelming rogue. Why, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Oh, pistol him, pistol him. Peace, peace. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone. And then to have the humor of state to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Bolts and shackles. Seven of my people with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up watch or play with my some rich jewel. 
Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus saying, Cousin Toby, you must amend your drunkenness. Oh, out scab! Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Malvolio takes up the letter. Oh, peace and the spirit of humor, intimate reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. Tis my lady, to whom should this be? Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows? If this should be thee, Malvolio, I may command where I adore, but silence like the Lucretian night, with bloodless stroke my heart doth soar. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A riddle. <laughs> Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her, she is my lady. And the end, what's that alphabetical position portend? If I can make that resemble something in me, softly. M-O-A-I. M, Malvolio. M, why that begins with my name. M, but then there is no consonancy in the sequel. A should follow, but O does. And then I comes behind. M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as the former, and yet, to crush this a little, it would bow to me. For every one of these letters are in my name. Soft, here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross guarded, I say. Remember. Go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud, I will baffle Sir Toby, I will be point devised the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. I thank my stars, I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross-gartered, even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. Here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. Exit Malvolio. <laughs> <laughs> we will not give part of, our, of this sport for a pension of thousands. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I, too. And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I, neither. Re-enter Mariah. Why, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, say but true does it work upon him. Like Aquavite with a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> Mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors, and cross gartered, a fashion she detests. If you will see it, follow me. Thanks for listening. This production of Twelfth Night was an original adaptation by Drew Duris O'Hara. It featured the talents of the following artists Carly Thomas, Alexis Johnston, Zach Russell. Kaylin George Wagner, Annie Gavin, Molly Anderson, Jarrah Chisholm, Aiden Bradshaw, Mikhail Oikel, Ella Buckler, Maggie Dessonier, Emma Toop, Kaylin McKay, Gracie McNeil, Lael Grant Church, J. 
Jake Wilkie, Mariah Collins, with original music by Indy Tissoy, stage managed by Naomi Danzi, additional text coaching by Jay Duris O'Hara, Jonathan Grady was our fearless producer. Special thanks to David Zink and Halifax Regional Arts for making this all happen. And finally, this production was edited by Josh Credis 